So before I create the controller, I want to have a way to send a response to the user. So every time I want to send the same response, either if I get an error or if I have a success, then I want to send the same response to the user. So what I'm going to do inside of the model, I'm going to define another class. I'm going to call it response. And this is something that I like to do. You don't necessarily have to do it, but I like to send Oh, I made a mistake in this. So let's rename this. This is response. Yeah, like I was saying, I like to use a particular class and then return it every time that I'm building an API so that my API can be consistent. So inside of this class, I'm going to do protected and I'm going to do local date time and I'm going to do a timestamp for this. So time step and I want to do another protected and this is going to be the status code. So I'm going to do status code and another protected. This is going to be the HTTP status. So I'm going to do HTTP status and this is coming from Spring Framework and I'm going to call this the status and then I want the reason. So if I have an error in the application, I want to send the reason for the error. So this is going to be a string and I'm going to do another protected. That's also going to be a string and this is going to be a message. So this is a success message. So typically whenever there's a request that comes in and the operation was successful, then I'm going to return this message and the user can use that message in the front end to show like a notification to the user or something like that, which is exactly what we're going to use when we're working on the front end to show the little notification. And then I like to have a developer message. So that's going to be another string and I'm going to call it developer message. So this is a message that's going to be like more technical and more detail. And if a developer want to take a look at this message or they want to send that message over to some other services or something like that in the front end so they can use that message, uh, you know, something that is meant for a developer. And then lastly, and most importantly is the data. And I'm going to do a map for this and it's going to be a map of anything. And I'm just going to call it data. And you're going to see how this is going to come handy in a minute whenever we're using this class to send information over to the user to the front end. So this class is going to represent the response that I'm going to send to the user every time there is a request that comes into the application. Either if I'm sending a success response or a failure response, it's always going to be this class that's going to be embedded in the body of the response that we're going to send across the entire application so that our application can be consistent. And I also need to add in some annotations. So I'm going to do at data coming from Lombok and I'm going to use the builder pattern. So I'm going to do super builder. And lastly, I want to only include values that are not null. So I'm going to do JSON include. So I'm going to do none null, which is this one that I'm looking for. And I'm going to go ahead and do a static import for this. So what this annotation is going to do is since I'm going to be sending this, whether I'm sending a successful response or a failure response, right? So if I'm sending a success response, then this developer message is going to be null because I have no developer message because it's a success. This message is going to have some value to it, but this developer message and this reason, these two are going to be null. So because they're null, then they're not going to be included in this response at all whenever we're sending it to the front end. So that's what this annotation is doing. It's really handy when something is null, just don't show it at all to the user. So I'm going to be using this class as the response body that I'm going to be sending every time to the user whenever they send a request to the application. So now all we have to do is to create a controller and then use this class to send responses back to the user when they access our application.